As we introduce our AGA clinical practice update on integrating potassium competitive acid blockers or PCAVs into clinical practice, I'm Amit Patel, Associate Professor at Duke University School of Medicine and the Durham VA Healthcare System. I'm fortunate to be accompanied by my co-author, Dr. Lauren Lane, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Digestive Diseases at the Yale School of Medicine. Dr. Lane, what should clinicians know about PCABs? PCABs are a newer class of anti-secretory medication that may provide more potent acid inhibition than proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. Importantly, unlike PPIs, PCABs do not need to be dosed before meals. Compared to PPIs, PCABs have a more rapid onset of action and can provide more prolonged acid inhibition. In the last couple of years in the US, a PCAB has been approved for H. pylori therapy, treatment of erosive esophagitis, and most recently for non-erosive reflux disease. So clinicians should be aware of these medications. Dr. Mattel, when should clinicians consider the use of PCAPs in patients with GERD? In the setting of factors like medication availability and costs, clinicians should generally not use PCAPs as first-line therapy for all patients with non-erosive reflux disease or milder erosive esophagitis, that is, Los Angeles grades A to B at the present time. However, clinicians may use PCAPs for those patients with more severe erosive esophagitis, Los Angeles grades C to D, and are those patients with documented acid-related reflux who fail twice daily PPI therapy. Also, the more rapid onset of acid inhibition with PCABs raises interest in their use as effective on-demand therapy for reflux-associated heartburn symptoms. Dr. Lane, when should clinicians consider the use of PCABs in the treatment of Helicobacter pylori infection or peptic ulcer disease? PCABs appear to be more effective than PPIs as a component of H. pylori therapeutic regimens leading to the suggestion that clinicians should use PCABs in place of PPIs in eradication regimens for most people with H. pylori infection. There's interest especially in dual therapy with a PCAB and high-dose amoxicillin, which reduces pill burden, may reduce side effects, and provides more responsible antibiotic stewardship. In contrast, PCABs are not more effective than PPIs for patients with peptic ulcer disease and generally should not be used as first-line therapy for these patients. They may be useful in patients with peptic ulcers who fail PPI treatment. Finally, given their rapid and potent acid inhibition, there is interest in defining the potential utility of PCABs in patients presenting with bleeding ulcers and high-risk stigmata of hemorrhage. Dr. Patel, any final thoughts? Thank you, Dr. Lane. PCABs certainly represent a promising therapeutic option for our patients with foregut disorders such as GERD, H. pylori, and peptic ulcers. With that said, we should understand the clinical implications of the benefits of PCABs versus PPIs, as well as factors such as dosing, costs, availability, and safety data. To learn more about PCABs, please check out our Clinical Practice Update Manuscript, published in Gastroenterology this autumn. Thank you.